Because are we supposed to send? What happens if you, if you don't overcome your sin? What's going to happen? Will you make it to the kingdom of heaven? How do you make it to the kingdom of heaven? He said, follow the ten. So, okay, the ten, let's go over just the ten commandments, right? First one, thou shalt not have no other gods before me, right? Do y'all believe y'all keeping the ten commandments at least? I know I'm not. At least the ten? You see how serious it is in our communities? We're not keeping the ten commandments, right? You think if you're not keeping the ten, you get to the kingdom of heaven? Bring it on! You think you can or you won't? You won't, my brother. Even the ten, because that's how serious it is. We have gotten so far from God. Like I asked you to do you love God, but you didn't even keep the ten main things you brought us out with. You know what I'm saying? How serious it is? You know, having no other gods before me. For instance, y'all ever uh, celebrated your birthday? You never celebrated your birthday. You never blew out candles at a birthday cake. Not, not. Your brothers never. Okay. Y'all ever went to a Christmas gathering? Y'all ever went to a Thanksgiving gathering? Right. Okay. What I'm saying is, Fourth of July, y'all pop fireworks. Y'all do all these, there's all these holidays right. that America and Babylon, Revelation 18:4. There's all these holidays that Babylon has us to do and gather together and eat. You may not in your mind be like, oh yeah, I really want to serve Memorial Day, but if you're at the gathering, you're at the feast, and partaking in the festivities, right. you are a part of that spirit. That's Regardless right. of how you think it is, that's how the devil operates. The devil does not care if you worship his name or whatever. But when you do a Christmas, he doesn't care that you call it Christmas or you tell him, oh, I want to worship Satan. You're, what it is, he wants you to just be outside the Bible. Yes. That is it. As long as you're outside the Bible, he's doing his job. And that's how serious it is. And you brothers admit, you're not even doing the Big Ten. We have to come back to God's laws, my brother. All right, read that. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Come on. Uh -huh. And I heard another voice from heaven. Say, come out of her, my people. You guys are hearing that voice. You guys are hearing that. Come out of Babylon. This is the revelation. The last book of the Bible. All right? Read. That ye be not partakers of her sin. That's saying, come out of her and be not partakers of her sins. Read. And that ye receive not of her plagues. Partake in the sins of this country, you're going to receive the plagues. What are some of the sins of this country that, you know, like I was saying earlier, the holidays, y'all been through these holidays, what about the food? Is all food good here? What food, what does God say about the foods that are good and that are not good? What do you say? Y'all know? Maybe some foods you guys eat on a normal month, in a normal month. I know we're supposed to eat pork. So you don't eat bacon no more? I can't even say that because I just ate something last night. No one else, no one else. But the thing is, my brother, I still did. you heard, you may have had a, you know, a zeal for God, but you didn't have it according to the knowledge of the Bible, right? right. So you say pork. What kind of seafood y'all like? Always. Like seafood? You said you like fish. You like catfish? Right. Let's get some of the dietary laws because what God says. Remove yourself from, and from partaking the sins of this country because this country says it's, it's okay to have gay marriage. Right. How do y'all feel about that? Uh, you don't think it's right? Obama says it does. Oh, okay. So you don't mind? So you, you actually have a problem with it? No, I don't have a problem with it. So you don't have a problem with it? Because I, I can't have a problem with something that so I ain't even keeping mind. So, what you mean by that? Like, I'm saying, like, I, I see it, so, you know, I can't judge somebody else. But I'm saying, face. you say, oh, since it's over there, it's not a big deal, no, right? No, I'm saying, like, I can't judge nobody. I see it, too, so that's, that's they have, you know, that's just them. Is that right there? Is that difficult, what you're saying right now? How you doing, brother? I overheard what you were saying. You say you can't judge nobody. Yeah. Who taught you that? Well, I just, I just, my family, my grandma, you know, just, just, just you, you knowing actually, that I'm not perfect and knowing that, you know. You, did you, and you my brother, so don't take this wrong. But did you know, because you ain't the only one who say that. Or people say that all the time. But did you know that that mentality is the reason why we're in this situation today? Because yeah. when we keep saying, I can't judge nobody. That means if you see evil, don't nobody want to say nothing about it. Right. You do well, understand that, right? I ain't saying it like that, but I'm just saying. But like, you're saying, you just say, I can't judge nobody on that. That is what you're saying. You follow me, right? You know where we learned that from? Is it the Bible that taught us that? No. Tupac Man. taught us that. <laughs> Tupac said only God can judge me. And we just kind of just infused that with the Bible. Right. It's not in the Bible. Right. Two scriptures, John 7 and 24. No. I'm going to show you. 
And this is for you, my brother. So don't ever say that again. I just, I just thought that you know, I'm like, I just, somebody is Hey, it's wrong. It's wrong. If it's wrong and you're not guilty of it, yes, you can tell them about it. Right. Okay? Our people don't understand the difference between judging and condemning. So you mean I can't say nothing? No, the Bible don't say that. It says we can't condemn. God's the judge. You understand? Actually, start up with 2nd Ezra chapter 7, and I want verses 19 through 21. And then I want John chapter 7, verse 24. God is the judge, ultimately. But then I'm going to show you what we do and what our responsibility is for the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, all right? right? Watch Bro. this. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 19. Come on. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. You see, there's no judge above God. Right. So at the end of the day, he's the ultimate judge. That's right. You follow? Read. None that has understanding above the highest. We don't have understanding above the highest. But we understand that if God said don't eat pork, brother, you should be eating pork. Right. right. Do you understand? Yeah. Come on. For there be many that perish in this life. There be many that die. Me telling him stop being poor because I'm trying to save his life. Right. Come on. Because they despise the law of God. That's why we own the bottom. That's, right. That's why we get put to death in the streets. Because we despise the laws of God. Right. So why would we say for one second, I can't judge you? That's the wrong mentality. If you love your brother, you're going to teach him the right way. Right. Come on. That is set before them. Read. For God has given straight commandment. He said, hey, keep my commandments and live. The wages of sin is death. Right. He made it very plain and easy to be understood. No. Don't eat pork. Women, don't wear pants. Don't be an adulterer. You understand? Read. To such as came, what they should do to live. God gave us commandments on what we should do to live. Right. Now, give me John 7 and 24. We're going to no. deal with the judging. We're going to deal with, how you doing, my brother? How you doing, my sister? Watch this. John, chapter 7 and verse 24. Come on. Judge not according to appearance. God said don't judge according to appearance. Read. But judge righteous judgment. We have to judge righteous judgment. So the next question would be, what is righteousness? There you go. There you go. You have just walked up, so I'm going to ask, we're going to ask, it's going to be interactive, right? That's how we learn better. What is righteousness according to the Bible? Keeping the commandments, what do you say? What do you say, sir? What do you say? What do you think uh, righteousness is, sir? Keeping the commandments? Okay, what about you, my sister? What would you say uh, righteousness is? You say Christ-like. All right, so y'all say keep the commandments, she says Christ-like. So now let's go to the Bible, because the Bible's going to give us the definition of what righteousness is, okay? Right, right. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. Go. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. What is righteousness according to the Bible? I can't hear you. All the commandments of God, right? All his laws, statutes, and commandments. Now give me 1 Corinthians 2.15. We still did it because my brother said we can't judge. That's not true. Right. It's not in the Bible. We can judge. Right, that's right. Yes. If my brother's in sin, I can tell him, hey, bro, you're in sin. Stop doing that. Right. Yes, we can. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. Listen up real close. But he that is spiritual. It says the spiritual man, come on. Judges all things. Does what? Judges all things. All things. You know what? We're spiritual. But do you know why we're spiritual? Give me that in uh, Romans 7 and 14. We're going to show you what it means to be spiritual. Watch this. Because we're not going to come out here and be hypocrites. We're going to tell you that we're spiritual. We're going to show you how we're spiritual. Right. And y'all could be spiritual too. Right. You just don't know how to yet. Right. Watch this. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. That the what? The law is spiritual. So the commandments of God, guess what? We keep them. Right. So guess what? We are spiritual men. Right. 
And when we tell our people, hey, stop eating pork, stop eating crab, shrimp, lobster, where are we reading that from? The laws of God. Yes, you understand? Now, go back to John 7, 24. I want to touch that as well. Our people don't know this information. They give me Leviticus 5 and 1. Then I have some questions for all of you. Watch this. John chapter 7 and verse 24. Come on. Judge not according to appearance. Read. But judge righteous judgment. When you judge according to the law, you, you, you're not going to be mistaken. So y'all will take, some of you may, sisters normally take offense. I can't, I can't say you are because I just can't judge according to appearance. But sisters normally take offense when I go to where I'm about to go. Check this out. My man right here is guilty of some laws, and I can see it, because right. I'm judging righteously. He may be saying like, man, what you talking about? I'm not guilty of breaking any God's commandments. My sister right here, she's guilty of breaking some of God's laws right now. You're like, wait, wait, you don't even know me. I don't, but I'm spiritual, and I know what the law says. Same thing with my man right here, same thing with my man right here. Give me Leviticus 21 and 5 real quick. So I'm gonna deal with my man right here. And this isn't hate, this is actually love right. to save his soul from death. Right. That's what this is. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Come on. They shall not make baldness upon their head. God says we should not shave our heads bald. Right. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Read that part again. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. God told us that. You didn't know that. You never was taught that. But God says the man shall not shave off the corners of their beard. That's right. Why? Because a beard is a representation of manly manhood. Right. Right. How do you tell a female lion from a male lion? Well, you know. Yeah. By the man, the, the facial hair. That's right. God didn't make mistakes. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. It's us that make the mistake. Right. God made the man the way he made him, made us. And God made the woman how he made her. Right. It's us that make the mistakes. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God has not, God has made man upright. God made man to serve him. To serve him all the way. That's how God intended it to be. Read. But they have sought out many inventions. You see that? They have sought out many inventions. Now, do you know where the root of, you know, shaving off your beard and, and having a Michael Jordan bald head comes from? Ancient Egypt. Right. Ancient Egypt. That's what they did. The Egyptians are not Israelites. They are black people, but they are not the people of God. Right. Give me Leviticus 18 and 1. Let me show you something. How you doing, my brothers? Pay close attention. I'm telling you, this is the most important information you will ever hear in your life. Right. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 1. Come on. Yeah. This is close. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. That's who we came out here to. We speak unto the children of Israel today. Read. And say unto them, I am the Lord your God. He's the Lord your God. Remember what happened when Moses split the Red Sea. Does anybody remember that? What happened? Huh? He split the sea. Why did he split the sea? So they could cross. Who's they? The children. The children. Who's the children? The children of Israel. That's right. Now, when the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea, what happened? He closed it on who? Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Showing you what? He ain't their God. Right. He's only the God of the Israelites. Hey, that this up to you right there. He's like, hold on, wait a second. What you, what you saying right here? Yes, saying the same thing. We are living in spiritual Egypt today. And guess who needs deliverance? We do. We're the ones being killed out in the street. We the ones last high and first fire. We the one that they racially profile. We need deliverance. Right. And guess what? When we deliver, it will also be the destruction of our enemies. That's right. Now read that. Come on. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 3. Read. After the doing of the land of Egypt. So things like bald in our head, shaving our beard, men wearing dresses. He said after their doings, read. 
wherein ye dwelt, because we dwelt in Egypt. Y'all know we were slaves in Egypt. So we learned the ways of Egypt. Right. Similar to how we here in America, right? Haven't we learned the ways of America? Same thing. The same way we got to come out, had to come out of the ways of Egypt, we have to come out of the ways of America. Yes. It's the same thing. Read. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, Read. shall ye not do. He said, don't do it. And that's why he said that in Leviticus 21 and 5. Now, give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Same thing. God did not make a mistake. God didn't make no mistake. We made the mistake. So God told us to keep his commandments. Right. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 4. Watch this. No. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh, pertaineth unto a man. What article of clothing pertains to a man? Pants. Pants. You didn't know this. Pants. What article? We don't. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What article of clothing pertains to a woman? Dresses. Right. So what is God telling us? That America's backwards. Right. Right? Because don't men wear dresses now? Right? And don't women wear pants? Right? So what's going on there? That's called confusion. First Corinthians 14.33. Who is the author of confusion? Huh? No, no. Who's the author of confusion? Satan. Satan. Because God told us what to do, right? He said, men, don't wear dresses. Women, don't wear pants. But yet, you see nobody's listening to that. Read. First Corinthians. Chapter 14 and verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. God's not the author of confusion. Give me the book of Philippians, the second chapter. No. Give me Philippians, the second chapter. All right? No, or is it Ephesians 2? The prince of this power is there. Look at it for me. Yeah, Ephesians 2. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you something. Brother, what's your nationality, my brother that just walked away? Come here. What is your nationality? Come here, right here, right here. What is your nationality? See, that's why you need to be standing right there. Right. Because you don't know who you are. What? You think you're a black man. You're not a black man. Black is a color in a crayon box. Right. He, I say who he is, what you mean. You should know that. Because if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. Right. Most importantly, you don't know where you come from. You're the greatest people ever to walk on the face of the earth. Right. Your ancestors are Jesus Christ. Right. King David. King Solomon. So don't be asking me what you mean. That's the problem with our people today. Right. And I'm teaching with passion because I love you. Right. That's right. You understand? Now read what you got. Y'all need to listen to this before you go. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Listen up. Wherein in time past ye walk according to the course of this world. In times past we walked according to the course of this world. All of you. What's the course of this world? Break God's Sabbath day, which is Saturday. Go to church on Sunday. Women wearing pants. Men shaving their beards. Men being whoremongers. Women being thoughts. That's walking according to the course of this world. Read it again. Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world. Read. According to the prince of the power of the air. Remember, God ain't the author of confusion. Who is? Satan. Y'all are serving Satan and you don't know it. That's why we coming out here to wake you up. This ain't no game. You ain't never going to hear a Christian pastor teach the Bible like this. You not. And I hope this stirs something in your spirit. I hope it changes something in your spirit. So you can wake up, black man. And take back your communities. Stop selling poison to one another. Stop whoring out your sisters. And stop walking around without a damn clue. You're the greatest people ever to walk the face of the earth. What color is Jesus Christ? What color is Jesus Christ? You say black. What you say? You're not sure. He doesn't know. He need to know that. What color is Jesus Christ? I can't hear you, my brother. 
You say black, sis. You say brown, brother. What you say? What you say, my brother? Give me the scripture, you got it? Watch this. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Come on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Let me ask you, is wool a texture or a color? It's a texture. So let me ask you, second question. What people on the face of the earth have woolly textured hair? Who? Black people. Us. So where's the devil at? Where's he at? Hold it up. Hold that up. So we see that strike one against the image that they gave us. Let's read some more. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. It says his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why was Christ's eyes a flame of fire? He drunk wine. You understand? He drunk wine. What happens to the, the, the eyes, your, eye, your eyes? It, it turns red. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Was that? Brown. Brownish cover. Now I'll read some more. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned into a furnace. So what happens when you put something in a furnace? It turns what? So not only was he a brown skinned man, he was a dark skinned black man. So why would they give us this image? Revelation 13 and 15. Why would they give us this image? Why? To make you think that that's your God. How could the oppressor, the one who put you in slavery, also be your savior? What sense does that make? Because when the, when the slave, uh, when the chains came off, you may have been physically able to walk round about, but those mental chains still got you in bondage. You got it? Read it. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 15. Watch this. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The image of the beast is the so-called white man. Yes, right. That's the image that they gave us to keep us in mental bondage. Right. And they had power. How did they have power? They got financial power. Most importantly, what do they have? Military power. Right. Yes, right. To the point where they dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the Second World War and put all of the world to silence. Right, right. Read it again. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 15. Come on. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Where did they get their power from? Satan. Right. Think about it. How did the Wright brothers in 1905, 1903, right? How did they get that knowledge to fly? And then now in 2021, we in space? No, we actually landed on the moon in the 60s. So in that short time span, you mean to tell me that man had that type of knowledge? No. He got his understanding from Satan. Read. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image. Slavery. Y'all think that all of our forefathers oh, uh, willingly worship white Jesus? No. Many of us said, hell no. I know that's not Jesus. I know Christ is black. And guess what happened to those brothers and sisters who refused to worship that image? What happened? They were tortured, mutilated, raped, sodomized, and killed. Watch. Read that verse again. Watch. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. How does it speak? When you see those statues of this man, Cesar Bolgier, that's not Jesus. Watch. That's a real man that walked the earth. Watch. That's the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Hey. He's a real man who married his sister. He's a sodomite. He's a real man. But they put him as the image of our savior. You understand that? You know how this speaks volumes? When you see those big statues of this man. When you see movies like Passion of the Christ. 
That's how that image speaks through media. Read. And cause that as many as would not worship the image. So as many as us that not want to worship that image. Read. Of the beast. Of the beast. That's what God calls it. Read. Should be killed. That's what happened to us. Right. Now to the point where what? We stopped. We wanted to. We got tired of seeing our brothers get killed. And what did we do? Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't. I don't want to die today. Yes, I, I'll, I'll. I'll accept white Jesus. I'll accept white Jesus. That's our history. Right. Read. Verse sixteen. And he causeth all, both small and great. This man causeth all, both small and great. Why is America always in the Middle East, yep. spreading democracy? Why? Because he's the beast according to the Bible. That's right. But you never heard this in your Christian churches. Why? Isaiah 29 and 13. Because the white man is over the Christian churches. Stop! <laughs> Stop being ignorant. Right. Read a book. <laughs> this, is, this information is not hidden. And y'all know that I'm telling the truth. But a lot of us, we don't want to come out of our sin. We want to keep doing what feels good to us. Well, guess what? God said, if you don't want to serve him, death to you. You ain't getting in unless you serve him. If Jesus Christ had to die, guess what you got to do too? Bring it out. Bring it out. The son of God had to die to make it. The son of God had to die to make it to the kingdom of heaven. So how do you think for one second that we can continue to do what we want to do and make it to the kingdom? Who are you? Who loves God? Who loves God? You, don't, you hate God? Do you love him? Damn, you don't, you don't show it. You didn't raise your hand. Who loves God? Who's not ashamed of God? Okay, check it. First John, no, John 14 and 15. Bring it out. Because you're saying, I love God. I'm not ashamed of God. But you don't do what he says. Yeah. That's a hypocrite. Read it. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Read it again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So I'll ask the question again. Who out here loves God? No, you don't. You're not keeping his commandments. But you can start loving God by doing what? Keeping his commandments. But you need to understand. And your brother got to tell you the truth. I ain't your Christian pastor saying come as you are. God ain't never said that. Right. I'm telling you to repent so you don't have to be put to death. Yes, so you can inherit eternal life. Right. Numbers 15 and 38. Yes. Why does all of these men have fringes and a border blue in their garments? Why? Let's find out. Because it's a commandment of God. Yes. Read. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. That's a commandment to all of the children of Israel. And understand, anybody who hears the sound of our voice today, this was not our voice. This was the voice of God. God is trying to warn you. Death is coming. First Peter's, Second Peter's 3, no, yeah, Second Peter's 3 and 9. Death is coming, black man black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman. It's high time that we wake up out of sleep. Read. Second Peters chapter three and verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. God said if you don't serve him, yes, you're gonna put us to death. He's not slack pertaining to that promise. Read. As some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to usward. Read. Not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want us to die. That's why he allowed you to hear the word of God today. That's right. Because he don't want you to die. Read. But that all should come to repentance. That all of us should come to repentance. Read. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Meaning what? You don't know when a thief's coming to your house. Same thing with the Lord. You don't know when it's the end. You don't know when the end's coming. Read. In the which 
The heavens shall pass away with a great noise. With a great noise. The heavens that's going into the elements, the sky. That great noise is going to be boom. That's going to be an intercontinental ballistic missile. Breathe. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Come on. The, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Hey, we in Bainbridge, Georgia today. But in the day of the Lord, there ain't going to be no more Bainbridge, Georgia. That's right. There ain't going to be no more state of Georgia. There ain't going to be no more state of Florida. When Christ comes back, this place will be destroyed. Right. Read. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Meaning what? Judges 5.11. We must make sure without a shadow of a doubt that we are in a line with the commandments of God. Because death is around the corner. Read. Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archer. If you want deliverance from the missiles, if you want deliverance from the bombs, read. In the places of drawing water. We are in the places of drawing water. Why? Because we were made slaves here. This is the place, this is the place of drawing water. Because we serve hard bondage here. Read. There shall they rehearse the righteous act. If you want deliverance, you better be rehearsing God's laws. Read it again. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That's what we got to do. Some of the righteous acts wearing fringes and a border of blue. How hard is that? Hey, my man, that's hard. Putting this on your clothes is hard. Every shirt that you own, that you wear, that's hard to do? No. It's not hard. Growing your beard, is that hard? No. Not wearing a dress, is that hard? No. Fellowshipping and congregating on a Sabbath day, is that hard? No. That's all God is asking us to do. And he said in return to that, we get to live with him and his father forever. You all right with that? So what you going to do from this day? Because you've been here for a little minute, my brother. You just listening? Oh, you're going to uh, give me uh, Romans 2.13. It ain't about just listening, bro. God's called you to be greater. God called you to be on this side, leading your people. Right. Not just walking up and down the street. Right. You better than that. Right. Yeah, you know, but what you doing? Yep. You ain't doing a damn thing. So we're here to motivate you to do better. That's right. Read it. Romans chapter 2 and verse 13. Yep. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. That's you. God said you're not just. So meaning what? Your sins won't be justified. Don't you need your sins to be justified? Don't you need some deliverance from your sins? Read it again. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Not the hearers of the law that are just, read. But the doers of the law. But the what? The doers of the law shall be justified. You mean that in us, Acts 13, 36? Hey, all of us need to be justified, bro. Not one of us are worthy. No, not one. None of us. But, bro, you ain't going to be justified unless ye repent. That's right. Read it. Acts chapter 13 and verse 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. That is the key. Do you believe? You believe? You sure? Who believes? Who here believes? You believe? You believe? You believe. All right, let's see. Let's see who believes. You got it? Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, yep. 32 or 24. Because, yep. you know, in a Christian church, you could have got away with that because they don't know the Bible. Right. But we do. So everything you say, there's a scripture for it. So we're going to find out if you believe today. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32 and verse 24. Yep. He that believeth in the Lord 
taketh heed to the commandment. Are you wearing fringes in a border blue? The answer would be no. Do you believe? No. Now that's good. James 5 and 16. Now we could begin to build. We could begin to build. What's your name, bro? Robert. Robert. Uh, my name is Adathias. So now we can begin to build, Robert. Watch this. James chapter 5 and verse 16. Yo. Confess your fault. Do what? Confess your faults one to another. That's what you just did. You realize, you know what? I don't believe. That's step one, my brother. Marie. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. That you may be what? That ye may be healed. And that's the thing about it, Psalms 107.20. That's the thing about it, bro. The only way we can get healed is with this book right here. You understand that? You got it? The book of Psalms, chapter 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. God sent us out here today. We was actually holding camp over there for an hour. And then we just drove past. God told us to come right here. For you. Read it again. He sent his word and healed them. God sent his word today. You, uh, you smoke? Tell the truth. You smoke? Tell the truth. All right. So watch this. Give me, um, give me 1 Corinthians 3.16. No. And then uh, Psalms 104 and 14. Let me show you something, my brother. You want to be delivered from that? You want to stop? Or you want to continue to kill yourself? There you go. Holding on to your sins. God can't deal with you like that. Then what does it do to you? Does it keep you in your right state of mind? Or does it make you feel a certain type of way? Yeah, it, it, it does make you feel a certain type of way. You think we're stupid? Like we never smoked marijuana before, Pitt? Stop playing. Stop playing, bro. Read. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Look at you. You Why you keep coughing for? What? <clears throat> why are you doing that for? Because you're killing yourself, Robert. Look at you, Robert. But you want to hold on to that? For what? God said you can rule over the whole earth. You want to hold on to a joint? Oh, you heard all of it. Oh, so you just cast it to the side. Yeah, yeah. We, we ain't your uncle. We're the real prophets of God. So what you finna do, Rob? You finna continue to smoke your joints? Yeah. All right, bet. Walk away. My brothers, what have you learned today? Nah, you can walk away because you hate God. Right. And I ain't going to play with you, Robert. Right. You can make your choice today. If you want to humble down to God, humble down. Right. If not, go die. Right. Thus right. saith the Lord. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> What's I don't touch bases on who we are here out here. Yeah, yeah. I was there last week. Yeah. When you get your truck back, run and come down. So, so my brother, so you, so you understand that you're Israel. Oh, overstand. Oh, shoot. You got some other. That's something else. You got something else on you. I heard that before. Now, let me help you out. It seems like, give me uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. How you doing, my brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got some other doctrines with you. That ain't just Israel. That overstand stuff. Are you are you in the Kemetic? Now, uh, the Wabian? See? Right, right. You all over the place. Nope. Give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. No, no, no. We're going to teach you the right way today. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3. Come on. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You can't have unity when one brother believes Rastafarianism. You can't have unity when one brother believes Kemetic community. No. Read. There is one body. There is what? One body. There's only one body. Come on. One spirit. One spirit. Even as ye are called on. in one hope uh -huh. of your calling. Read. One Lord. One faith, one baptism. It's only one Lord, and there's only one way. 
Now, if you don't believe that, we can't build. But if you want to humble down and listen to this Bible, we can build. From there, give me Ecclesiastes 12 and, 13, 12, and uh, 12. 12 and 12. Watch this. What's your name? Bo. Bo. Watch this, Bo. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 12. Come on. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. Be admonished by making many books. The book of the dead uh, is uh, the Quran. All of these different books, read. Of making many books, read. there is no end. There's no end. You ain't never going to find the right way because you dabble in here. You dabble in there, meaning what? You don't fully believe any of it. Right. Read. And much study is weariness of the flesh. That's Solomon. You're not wise than King Solomon. King Solomon, he dabbled in witchcraft. But he was the wisest man on the face of earth. And he telling you, bruh, don't do it. I already did all this, so I wrote this so you won't do it. Give me Isaiah 34 and 16. And I'm going to let you know, you don't need no other book except the Bible. Because those other books, ain't, they don't have any prophecy in it. Only the Bible can tell you thousands of years ago that we would have been uh, on this side of the world going into slavery on cargo slave ships. The Quran can't tell you that. The Egyptian Book of the Dead can't tell you that. None of them can tell you that. Read. What about the Torah and the Torah? The Torah is the first five books of Moses. That's the Bible. You understand? Read. Isaiah. So, yeah, I just said the Bible. You, do you know what the Torah and Tanakh is? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so why would you ask that when I just said the Bible? This is the Torah and the Tanakh. Do you speak Hebrew? No. You don't, so stop it. Read. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. Come on. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. The Bible says seek ye out of the book of the Lord. We always make the, we want to be deep. Man, stop that stuff, bro. God gave us straight commandments. Stop trying to be deep. Read. And read. Because I ain't going to let you know. You try to be deep. You ain't going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me or none of these men. I'm going to let you know. We know more. That's why we out here teaching. Read. No one of these shall fail. He don't truly believe. That's why he, he see where this was going. Read. None shall want her mate. No other book is going to want the mate with the Bible. Understand that. This is the only way, my brother. This is the only way. Now, give me that in uh, Joel 3.19. Because my brother said he does listen to some of that uh, Egyptology, Nuwabi, and all that stuff like that. Give me Joel 319. Let's see what's going to happen to them. Joel 319. Got it? Come on. Joel, chapter 3 and verse 19. Come on. Egypt shall be a desolation. Boom. Egyptology, why would you listen to it? Egypt's going to be a desolation. He said Rastafarianism. Give me Zephaniah 212. He said Rastafarianism. Why would you want to follow uh, the Ethiopian uh, doctrine? Right. Give me that. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 12. Ye Ethiopians, also ye shall be slain by my sword. Boom, we just destroyed the doctrine in a matter of 30 seconds. God saying this Bible is the only way. Right. How do you get the kingdom of heaven, my brother? Yes, sir. There you go. Now, are you keeping the commandments? It's either yes or no. Be real with yourself. Stop playing. You don't. There you go. So now we can show you. Matthew 19, 16. Come on. That's all you got to do. We complicate it. Just listen to God and do what he say. Watch this. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Come on. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. Come on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Come on. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. If we want to enter into life, which is the kingdom of heaven, living forever, we got to keep God's commandments. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us a spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. 
Europe, or Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repent to their heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.